welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. I thought we'd take a look at the super fiendish Sudoku uh, from the today's times. It's uh, Wednesday, the 31st of January. Um, let's uh, see what this puzzle looks like. I'll talk through the solve. We'll do it reasonably slowly. Um, explain how to use technique uh, to get the most out of your your solve. So, what we like to do, uh, both Mark and I. Um, and we've both represented the UK and the World Sudoku Championships, is to mark in each 3x3 three three box um, little pencil marks, as you can see here, when a number can only go in one of two positions. Um, we find this is probably the most efficient way of um, making pencil marks, especially on the computer here, where you've only got one form of pencil mark to make. Sometimes, I know some people will will also mark if a square can only contain exactly two digits. You might do that in a different color if you were working in pencil or in pen. Um, but that's not an option here, so we have to have to make do with what we what we have. Um, let's just go through as you would normally do, trying to spot uh, trying to spot numbers. You can see that has to be a seven there. So seven in one of these two positions and the this bottom box here, so we can mark that in like that. Uh, this six here is helpful because it this three now becomes important. We can place a three in this bottom box now. Uh, so let's do that. And we can use our earlier notation to help us out. There, so we've still got one seven eight to place in this box. So you can see this seven has to go in here, and there we go. There's our first, I suspect, important breakthrough in this top box here. We've managed to isolate two cells which contain exactly two digits. Um, so one would hope that that fact would be important. Certainly I will be concentrating very hard on this box now to see whether or not this deduction allows us to make more progress. Um, so let's have a look. So we can write in a 1 up here. We've got uh, 124 to place in the in the column. You can see here, this cell here can only be a 1 or a 2. Um, can't tell which at the moment. One thing I might do though if I was solving is I would test mentally. I would say, okay, if this is a 1, does that immediately lead to a contradiction? You can see that would mean there was a 1 in one of these two cells and a 1 here. But again, that seems totally plausible. Similarly, if this was a 2, uh, I can't see how that would be eliminated by any of the checking entries. It's just another tip to, that I, I would try and do. Sometimes you find that once you've limited a box to only one of two possibilities, if you do that check, one of them will be instantly ruled out and of course that then helps you to break the puzzle. Uh, something you can notice in column 8 here, we need to place a 4 in this column and this, this 4 here is preventing us from placing it in one of these two positions. So this, this cell here has to be a 4. That allows us to place a pencil mark in this box like that. We need a 1 and an 8 in these two positions. So let's mark that in. You can see again that fills in a lot of this box now. We still have to place 259. Um, we can now pencil mark the 5 over here. And a five in one of these two positions. Uh, there's a naked six here, look. Let's pull that in. Whenever you get these lines of three as well in a particular box, always try and um, you know, use that at least to make pencil marks. So you can see, although I can't make a pencil mark with the eights here, there will be an eight in one of these three positions because of this eight. And therefore, I'm going to allow, just use that logic to place an 8 in one of these two positions. Um, now, scanning up, because we've got this 6 here, we can, this now has to be a 3. 
that resolves these two positions here and allows us to place a 7 into, into this box. And I'll place 7s down here in terms of pencil marks. Then we can look at this box here. We need to place a 4, 6 and 8 in the box. But interestingly enough, we have a 4 and a 6 here checking this position, forcing it to be an 8. Let's fill that in. That allows us to make pencil marks in this bottom box here like this. And pencil marks in this position, these two positions here like this. And now one of the advantages of this method of notation actually comes to the fore. Um, because we can use uniqueness now to fix a one in this bottom right hand box. Um, have a think about that. If you can't see how to do that, just pause the video. It's worth giving it a moment's thought. I'll explain it in a second. You can see that we have a one here and a one in one of these two positions here. So we know that there is a one in one of these three positions in this box, in this box here. Now let's ask ourselves the question, if we were to write in pencil marks like this, could the puzzle be solved? And the answer is the puzzle could be solved, I guess, but it would have two solutions. Because there could be a 1 here and a 1 here, or a 1 here and a 1 here, and the 8s would just switch positions as well. So given that this is a times cross, uh, well, a times Sudoku and it's been properly prepared, um, it'll only have one solution. So if it only has one solution, this cell must take the one. It is not possible for us to mark ones in these positions here. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to place a one in this position and see if that makes any difference. And you can see it does. It allows us to place pencil marks in these positions like this, which gives us an excellent one seven combination in this three by three box. And it's this step here that we found with the ones and the unique step that basically breaks the whole puzzle open. You can see we have a 2 and a 9 in these positions here. Well, the only place, therefore, that 2 and 9s can go in this box are here and here, like this. And therefore, we know that the 5 in this box here must be in one of these two positions. We now have a 4-5 combination as well and that allows us to resolve where the 5 goes in this bottom 3x3 three three box here. So let's fill that in. Uh, now if we look at column 7 we know we need to place a 2, a 7 and a 9 into this column. Um, and we have a 2 and a 9 here in this row. So this, this has to be the 7. The 7 from this position. And now we can make more progress. If we look again at um, column 7, we know we have a 2, 9 here and a 2, 9 here. And because of these pencil marks we've already made, we can see this is 2, 9 and this is 2, 9. So these two cells will be 2 and 9 in some order. We don't know that order yet, but we know they will be 2 and 9. And that, in effect, gives us six numbers now in row 9. We know that we have to fill the other three open cells with 1, 7 and 8 in some order. But look at this box here. This can't be a 1 or a 7, so this has to be an 8. Let's fill that in. That's very helpful because it allows us to resolve these two positions here, which again flows through the puzzle like this. We now can notate the two and the nine in um, in this box here. And from here, I suspect the puzzle will become much easier. We've got enough numbers in that it will fall fairly quickly. You can see this 5 here means there can't be a 5 in either of these two positions. So we can pencil mark in 5s here and here. And that resolves where the 5 goes in this bottom box. 5 there and a 4 here. 
that forces a 4 into this position, which resolves the 4 and the 6 over here, like this. Forces a 6 over here. Uh, and the only thing we have to be careful about now is not uh, making use of all these quick deductions we're making. So let's try and make sure that we keep track of things. We still need to place a 3, you can see in column 6 here. There's only one place it can go, and that's here. That's very useful because by placing a 3 here, you can immediately see I'm going to be able to place the 8 here because we know that the 8 is in one of these two positions. So I can go 3, 8, 4 instantly. Looking across here, 8 and 1. Again, very, 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 very quickly one can resolve these things. Uh, now this cell has to be a 9, it's the only place a 9 can go. And we can pencil mark nines over in this position and this position. This is a one and a two in some order. I don't think we can see yet quite how they're going to resolve themselves. And that means we've got five, eight, and nine to place up here. So again, let's put the pencil marks in like that. Okay, and then we can see we've got a, a 4 here and a 4 here. So simple Sudoku logic. We could have probably put this 4 in earlier, but I don't think it would have given us uh, a great deal of joy. That allows us to press a 4 into this position. Okay, so now we're going to have to work hard. 1, 2, 5, 9. So here you can see this cell here. That's going to also be a 1 and a 2. So we now have a 1 and a 2 here and a 1 and a 2 here. Hopefully that's obvious. That means this cell here is a 5 or a 9. Now rather unluckily, nothing is resolved if we scan down this column. We don't have a 5 or a 9 to tell us which of this this will be. So we're just going to have to bear that in mind for the moment and carry on working. Except I guess that if we know this is a 5 or a 9, we can if we just look up to row 3, we can see this cell also will be a 5 or a 9 which means that we only have to place 1 and 8 in this column to finish it. Well, this can't be a 1, therefore this must be the 8, this must be the 1, and look, that then totally resolves this, this cell as well. That has to be a 9, and this has to be a 5. Now this has to be a 9 over here. We're left with 2 and 5 to place, so let's do that. We remember this could only be a 5 or a 9, so that must be a 9 now forces the 9 up to this position. This is going to have to be a 2. Now remember this was a 1 or a 2. Let's just fill that in like this. And this has to be a 5. So this is how you go about solving one of these more difficult uh, Sudoku puzzles. I hope this has been helpful. It's been Quite a good puzzle today to demonstrate the importance of technique, and uh, we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.